When a chemical reaction occurs, there's an enthalpy change or an energy change. The reaction can either be exothermic, where the products are downhill and energy is released, or it can be endothermic, where the products are uphill and energy is absorbed. Either way, the enthalpy of a reaction is a state function. It only depends on where I start and where I finish, and not the pathway to go between the products and the reactants. That means I can imagine different pathways, and as long as I start at reactants and end at products, I can sum enthalpies to get the enthalpy for the overall reaction. So let's look at that. Here's a chemical reaction going from reactants to products. In this case, it's exothermic. It's downhill. Energy is released. Now, rather than going from reactants directly to products, one way I could imagine this happening is taking all the reactants and breaking them up into their component atoms. So I have all just atoms in the gas phase, and then recombining those appropriately to form the products. So breaking all the reactant bonds, and then forming all the appropriate product bonds. If I do that, breaking the reactant bonds will always be endothermic. This is exclusively bond breaking. So if I'm going from reactants to their atoms, that's a adding energy for all the bonds in the reactants. Now I can just form all the bonds in the products. And that will always release energy. So there will always be an exothermic step, an endothermic step to break, and an exothermic step to make the bonds. Now it just depends. Do I get more energy back when I make the product bonds than when I broke the reactant bonds? That will determine whether the overall reaction is exothermic. In this case, I put in some energy to break the reactant bonds, but the product bonds were more stable overall, so I got an overall release in energy. But you could imagine a case where you break the reactant bonds and form the product bonds, but you don't get as much energy back. And that would be an overall endothermic reaction. In either case, you could find the enthalpy of the whole chemical reaction, by taking the sums of all the bonds that you broke and the sums of all the bonds that you formed and subtracting the two. So take all the enthalpies of breaking bonds as positive numbers, all the enthalpies of making bonds as positive numbers, and subtract the two, you'll get the enthalpy for the chemical reaction. Now, if this were elements in their standard states, most of them in their standard states have bonds to their associated molecule, like carbon will be in a carbon lattice with lots of carbon-carbon bonds. Hydrogen is in hydrogen gas in its standard state, diatomic molecules. If I broke apart all the carbons in a carbon-carbon solid lattice and all the hydrogens in hydrogen gas and then formed some hydrocarbon, that would be the heat of formation for that hydrocarbon. And I could calculate a heat of formation from bonds broken, and bonds formed. So this is a handy way using a path that we kind of imagine in our mind, but for one that's eminently calculatable. That is, look at all the bonds, figure out how much energy it takes to break them, look at all the bonds that are formed, figure out how much energy that is, and just do the math. Simply accounting to keep track of the enthalpy of a chemical reaction. So that's the power of understanding bond enthalpies.